let me start on what is the coronavirus. You've seen a lot of names, coronavirus, COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2, SARS, and they all in a sense mean the exact same thing here. This virus is a RNA virus. What I mean by that, the genetic signature inside this virus, that little curly is made of a RNA that can reproduce. But most importantly, the virus has on its surface a envelope or a capsule. And then you see the spikes. And the spikes form a crown, and that's why it's called coronavirus. In 2019, it created this disease in China, and that's what COVID-19 was the first name. Uh, coronavirus disease in 2019, COVID-19. And now the World Health Organization has created an official name. This is the latest scientific name, SARS-CoV-2. And why SARS-CoV-2? Because this is a second generation daughter virus of SARS. And why is that important to us? Well, it's given us a head start. It's given the scientists a head start since 2003, 2004, 2005 to fully understand this family of coronaviruses, specifically SARS and now SARS-CoV-2. What's exciting about that is we now have in our fingertips supercomputing, genomics, bioinformatics that wasn't as advanced even in 2003. And this is now allowing us to understand how contagious is this coronavirus. Because sadly, this mutation has allowed SARS-CoV-2 to become a thousand times more infective than that of SARS. And that is the fear. The fear is SARS was an endemic, limited in its scale and scope, but now SARS-CoV-2 is a pandemic. So the question that we need to understand is how does this enter your body? What does this do? How does it affect the cell? How does it get, affect the lung? And uh, what organs does it affect? I think this is an opportunity for us to take a different lens of understanding the host effects rather than just the virus itself. And if we look at that host effects, we now truly have a shot at trying to block it and block the ability to get to SARS. So firstly, is an infected person has the ability to contaminate 2.6 other patients. And how does that happen? Well, it's droplets. And this uh, nanoparticle of a virus forms droplets. And these droplets can go on surfaces and they go into your hand. The important fact is that your hand is now a vector. We'll come back to how we can use that fact to our advantage and kill the virus. But the lungs, what happens inside the cell? Well, this virus has now hijacked this receptor in our body called the ACE2 receptor. This receptor is on blood vessels, this receptor is on kidney and even on heart, but most importantly on the, what we call the alveolar cells of the lung. It's in a very important receptor called ACE2 because it's there in your body to protect your lung tissue from injury. What has happened is this virus through its spikes has figured out a way to interact with that receptor and use that receptor to dock. The virus goes on now to take advantage of the cell itself and use the cell as a factory. It's now taken on what we call taking the RNA inside the, the virus itself. It breaks it up and remarkably takes the what we call the Golgi apparatus, the, the, the machinery of the human cell to reproduce itself and repackage and in so doing, it, it propagates. So this is the issue of how the virus actually regenerates and sheds. Now we are full circle because that shedding of that positively charged patient has ability to contaminate others. And the opportunity, however, to stop, not just unfortunately the shedding, but stop that pr propagation is what containment is all about. Mm -hmm.